What is up, First Family? I'm excited for another episode of Changing the Game, uh, brought to you by Rockwell Automation. We have another very exciting guest that I'm, I'm extremely excited about this particular guest because he's also a mechanical engineer and also loves conquering obstacles both on and off the course, uh, very similar to the passions. Um, but this guy is an absolute monster in the sport in the best way possible. Uh, Six-time American Ninja Warrior, also a champion of uh, Exatlon, uh, Telemundo. So he is um, got a really cool athletic background. And on top of that is a mechanical engineer and has done engineering all across the globe. So um, Nate, if you're in here already, throw in the, the request to join the live. Um, and I'll go ahead and add you in. And um, we're super excited to go in, in depth in both the sports side and also the uh, thing that you um, are accomplishing and have done. What's up, man? Yo! How's it going? What up, my bro? Good Great. To see you, man. I'm excited yes. to, to start this. I was giving the audience a little background on some of your accomplishments. We'll go into that much deeper because I know the list is, is pretty long. But thanks for, for joining us. Um, and for those of you tuning in, again, Nate's been, he's done work all over the globe. He's lived in multiple countries. So throw in which country you're, you're tuning in from in the comments, what your team number is, um, you know, give us some, some shout outs to where you're coming from around the world. Um, and yeah. definitely throw in any questions that you guys have for Nate. We'll address some of those later on. Right on. What's up, everyone? Exactly Speaking what Jay that, said. You're not home right now, right? No, I'm not. I'm on the road. You're out on the road, right? I'm on the road. I'm actually, I'm heading to Puerto Rico next week, but right now I'm in San Diego doing a few events down here. Okay. So forgive me for not being in my home setup where I've got the best lighting, but we make it work. This is what engineers do. You make the best of a situation. This is what athletes do as well. So I'm excited to be here. Jay, thanks for having me on. Thanks for setting this up. And I love seeing what everyone has to say in the comments, especially where they're coming from. And as I mentioned, I'll be in Puerto Rico next weekend. So I'm looking forward to meeting some friends and fans down there. I love it. I might have to join you, man. I'm, I've Come got on. a lot of vacation days left, so maybe Come we'll on. Hop on. Bro, you're yeah, Captain sure. Puerto Rico, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it looks like we've got some people on the call from Puerto Rico. I see Australia, St. Louis, Missouri, FRC Team 931. We've got Utah. We've got Velabot 7577. Um, where else? We got people from all you. over the place. So this is well, Houston, uh, Texas. Houston Come on, represent. Yeah. <laughs> some more Puerto Ricans. That's yeah. all. A lot of Australia teams as well. Shout out to them. Bien, bien. All of me amigos. I'm Romania. Leah. Wow. Costa Rica. Incredible. Awesome. I love it. Uh, keep keep showing the love for where you guys come are. On, come on, come on, come on. This is awesome. Yeah. So um, well, let's start with that. Like, I, I know you, you kind of currently live in Houston, but you've been on the road for a while. You were on the TV show, uh, Exatron and Telemundo. So you were out in the Dominican Republic for a couple months. But wh where did you grow up? How did you even get into um, sports early on? And, and what kind of got you on the path towards engineering, too? Did those kind of happen together? Was it two different worlds for you? Give me a little background on, on how you grew up and how you ended up in these two awesome spaces. Yeah, great question. Well, grew up mostly in Tennessee as a kid. Okay. My dad was both an athlete and studying to become an engineer. Nice. He and, so I, I got raised with a family of five kids, two brothers and two sisters, a competitive dad. So okay. I got into sports because of my father. And, but I always, always had a knack, as, even as a kid, of taking things apart. So okay. I think as engineers, you know, in that science, technology background, sometimes we're hands-on, we're problem solvers. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, now it's more computerized. You're, you're figuring yeah. things out, even in video games, like you like to solve problems. And I've always mm -hmm. enjoyed taking things apart, diagnosing them. We had a, a fairly poor family growing up, so we okay. learned to improvise to make up sports. But also, I became the one fixing my mom's appliances when things would break. Mm -hmm. And I learned how to do that out of necessity. And then when our vehicle would break, dad's like, hey, can you try to help me with this? We got to figure it out because we can't pay for the mechanic. And by those little things, I learned. Hey, I have the ability. You can take this fan apart and maybe we can just put the wire back together. Sometimes it's simple and that builds our confidence to say, hey, there's ability here. Let's keep trying and learning. 
I had to do the same thing with sports because I can't consider myself being good at any sports up until maybe high school. I uh-huh. tried baseball. I loved it, but I was also the kid in the outfield, maybe like asleep because I was bored <laughs> and waiting for the ball to come to me or I'm, I'm out picking flowers or doing something. I, I wasn't that great at it, but as I got older, I enjoyed the competitive nature and okay. I started to see a link between sports and what I would say at the early age, it wasn't engineering, but it was problem solving to me. Like mm, I can look at go. this analytically. I can figure out how this works. I can see some yeah. strategy and then I can start using what I think I am good at to try to help myself in a, in a competition or the game or getting better mm-hmm. something. But in, ten, in high school, I played tennis and I got okay. better at that. That's a, a bit of a mental game. So I'm thankful to have that background. That helped me in fu- the future of sports because, you know, what you and I do with Ninja Warrior and Exathlon, it's a little bit of a solo sport. So yeah. you have to be able to focus in when there's a high pressure moment and it's just you and you have to perform in that moment. And tennis gave me the ability to handle that because it's, it's one-on-one. Okay. And then, and I always loved math and science in high school, or maybe, maybe I should say I was not that good at English. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't enjoy history as much. Y'all know hablo espanol in, in high school, but I had dos años. Uh, tengo lessons de Francois, French. Como se? Francés. 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 I had a little bit of French in high school, but I, I didn't pay right. attention. Y'all know entiendo. <laughs> but I had some friends in Louisiana where I went to junior high and high school okay. that spoke Spanish. And so I always thought, oh, it would be cool to learn espanol. But we didn't have lessons in Louisiana. It was only French lessons. There was mm. no Spanish yeah. lessons because it's a French heritage place. Yeah. But I didn't enjoy English or history, but I, I did okay at math and science. So then I began okay. to like those things. You know, yeah. many of us gravitate towards the things that we're good at or at least not terrible at. So I got <laughs> better there, enjoyed that progression. And then I thought, you know, I could, I could do okay in this. There has to be some kind of future. And people started telling me about engineering. And I mm-hmm. learned more about STEM classes and science and technology and begin enjoying that more. So I made yeah. that step in college to go into engineering. Not sure if I could do it or make it, but mm-hmm. just like anything, it took a lot of perseverance, commitment, yeah. some risk taking. And I'm thankful that I went through that. And I, as I became more successful and became an engineer, I also became a better athlete. And so we can talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, I'm still seeing a lot of good comments here. Yeah, Go ahead. lots of engagement, guys. Keep that coming. Let us know what you want to know from Nate. Uh, keep shouting out your team numbers and the countries that you're representing and, and coming to us from. I know we've got multiple continents and time zones on, on the call. Yeah. So appreciate everyone coming in. You said a lot of really key things there. I want to dissect a couple of them a little bit deeper. Come on. But, you know, thanks for showing us kind of that, that journey. Um, one of them was that, you know, maybe you weren't always necessarily good at math and science but you found something interesting about it. And, and I think one of the keys for students on the call right now that are exploring robotics, that are in math and science classes, I think one of the keys is just because it's hard doesn't mean you're bad at it. And I think that's something that Ninja yeah. Warrior, that rock climbing, that obstacle course racing shows you because it is very difficult to be able to, you know, make it to a city finals or go to Las Vegas for Ninja Warrior. But that doesn't mean that you should just stop doing ninja, right? We fail obstacles every single day. Exactly. So can you talk a little bit about that journey and how it made you know maybe you learn some of those lessons in the engineering world too? Because I know you know you've you've made it very far in ninja many times, but you've also had some tough falls along the way, right? And I know your your training isn't completing every single obstacle that you train on, right? So there's there's yeah, kind of um, good. getting comfortable with that process of of failing and getting back up and trying again. Can you touch on that a little? That's good, Jay. Yeah, there's a good parallel between trying to be successful as an athlete and especially as an obstacle athlete because as you and I have seen, obstacle courses, they tend to change. You have some things that are basic, but in Ninja Warrior and Spartan Racing, you see new obstacles that you're faced with or new configurations of an obstacle. You might have a foundation of how to climb over a wall, or you know the distance you have to jog or run between obstacles. Mm -hmm. But every time it's a new course, there's a new configuration. The -hmm. same thing in, I think, engineering and and STEM courses, you get a foundation. You you understand you have some athletic ability, but then you're going to find something new in the world that's presenting Mm -hmm. a problem. Now you have to take the tools you have and put them together to figure out this problem. 
That's why I like engineering, and that's why I like any kind of obstacle course racing and Ninja Warrior because it's new. And I, I get excited about what's something new, what's the new problem, what's the way that I can try to solve it. And when it's a fun challenge to me, then I enjoy it because now I have to be alert. I have to be engaged. And what I learned in engineering, it was a hard thing for me to overcome because I came from a very poor background in my schooling. So we had – I homeschooled some. We had okay. pretty poor teachers. I, I, I'd say decent teachers, but – it was, it wasn't a much of a focus on me being able to move up. So I didn't even have calculus in high school. Okay. I went to college and took calculus for the first time. That oh, was man. pretty challenging. <laughs> that was scary. And then I, I le- realized even though, you know, engineering and Ninja Warrior type things can be individual, it's still mm-hmm. important to have a team around you. Yeah. And you and you and I have both seen like engineering and STEM uh, courses are very important to have a team foundation. Like mm-hmm. you may be, responsible for your grade or your test, but it's so much more important to have a, a group around you that can help you. Like I had a lot of people teach me and help me when I was struggling both in school and engineering. But when I get into Ninja Warrior, there's one person on the course, but you still have your support crew next to you. It was the same on Exathlon. You know, you're you're running the course alone, but you have your, your equipo, your team there. And they're like, come on, vamos, gringo. Let's go, let's, let's go, let's go. And uh, focado, focado, focus. I've always got someone shouting at me. Yeah. But in a good way. And that helped me, you know, early on in my engineering career, I learned when I started working, it's different. A university teaches you to be on a team and to work with others. But when you get into a job full time, it's important that you develop skill sets to help your team and for allowing them to help you. And so when I would help them in different ways with the skills that I had, others would help me. That made it so much easier to accomplish a mission and okay. meet an objective and overcome whatever obstacle came in our way because what i like about obstacle course racing is it's just a metaphor for life we have (laughs) so many obstacles that are going to come up in our career in our relationships and whatever we're pursuing and we have to learn to handle it you know say all right this this unexpected thing came but i've gotten through the past one before i've overcome that obstacle that injury that setback now i can apply the same mentality to the next challenge that i have and it's going to be a different, but a little bit of the same. And maybe it just gets a little harder. Or you, you learn that you can run a little yeah. faster. So those are the, the parallels. And having the analytical mind of what's the best way to get through this, mm-hmm. that engineering analytical mindset to look at a problem and try to diagnose it has helped a lot in obstacle course racing, especially in Ninja Warrior, because it's one try and then you're, <laughs> you're done. It, you know, we've, we've come to that heartbreak point when – you know, you're, you're, it's do or die. Yeah. And I think there's important aspects of that in the sciences and the technology element where we, we test out a lot of things, but when we build something as an engineer or when we make a prediction as a mathematician, it's important to get it right. So there's room to fail, but we also want to be practiced enough and haven't done enough tests where when we put something out to the world, when we build a bridge, when we create mm-hmm. a, build an airplane, it's tested, but we can rely on it. Yeah. And so there's, there's elements of com- or connection between the two, between those athletics and being analytical and then testing things out, being prepared. And then also, if we're, if we're in operations like I have, you, you have to handle things on the fly, which can be exciting and also a little scary. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, again, you put so many good points in there, and I see the hearts <laughs> like flying like crazy on the side here. Um, because you're just dropping really good pointers. Uh, one of those, I, I just realized, too, I didn't take calculus until I got to the university, and I think I got up to pre-calculus or something. And that was one of those first classes where you, you get, like, a, a really bad grade for the first time, and you're just, like, Ooh. freaking out. But you're so <laughs> right, is that just you need to understand when you get to the university that this is different. This is a bigger challenge. It's a different world, right? But there's so much support around yeah. you, whether that's via the university services or just other people that you're studying with. So all of you students out there that may be in, in a, a tougher course right now, just make sure that you're surrounding yourself with those tools that you need to get to the next level and that, that you don't Great let time. those barriers pre- prevent you from getting where you want to go when all you really needed was just a little bit of, uh, you know, of your team around you. Um, you also mentioned both in your previous answer and in this one that it really just boils down to problem solving. And, and I love that because some people think, oh, well, you have to be 
super good at math or super good at science. But I, I think it really is just you have to be very curious and you have to mm. find problems that you're excited about. Right. And then you just yeah. go out and you apply those skills to solve those problems. So how did you decide um, kind of, I, I believe you started out kind of in the oil and gas industry, right? As a mechanical mm -hmm. engineer, how did you go down that path? And then also, um, do you apply that to Exatron and Ninja Warrior too? Whereas like, you know, I, I'm excited about this. So it, it makes me better because I'm just passionate about it. Yeah, it's a good question. You know, if you've seen me on Ninja Warrior or on Exatron, I'm an excitable person. But, pero, I'm not always like that behind the scenes. Okay. There's times I have to get myself excited. Mm -hmm. And for sports, for big moments, it's fun because you feel the energy. You feel the crowd. You know, right now I can see people in the comments and they're liking and they're, they're excited, you know. And, yeah. and so it makes me, like, hyped. I'm like, let's go. <laughs> let's go. And the, that's good. The heart's going. <laughs> right? It's good. But if you saw me in the finals in Exatalon against Nona, I, I didn't perform very well because at first there was so much encouragement and excitement from both teams. I was a little bit overwhelmed, yeah. but it, it, I learned how to handle it and I, I love it, but it also, it's easier to be excited when you have a crowd and you have energy. Mm -hmm. Now on the flip side, engineering and engineers and people in science and technology and mathematics, they're not always as an excitable personality. They're a little bit more calm and they're focused on, how do we study something? Mm -hmm. Now, the same could go for an assignment. If you're working in one of those career paths and you get an assignment, you're, you're in your job, it may not feel extremely exciting. Now, there could be challenges. There could be cool things about it. I've learned that I have to find a way to get myself excited about it okay. and, and a little bit nervous. You know, in mm -hmm. Exatalon, you, you're in front of people. The same with Ninja Warrior. And you know, if you don't perform here, you're going to feel embarrassed. Yeah. You've put in a lot of hard work to prepare, and you want to do well. And so for the engineering assignments and the things that I've had in the mathematics, you don't really have a crowd around you, mm -hmm. but I'll find things that both excite me about that job I'm going to do, okay. and I'll find something that kind of scares me. And those two things, I'll get myself hyped up on it. I'll be like, okay, let's do this. Let's, let's go. I'm excited. I'm driving to work, you know, and I got my – my podcast on, or I'm listening to music and I, I get in and I'm excited in the office. I'm like, let's, let's take on this challenge. And I yeah. try to repeat that every day. It's kind of a, a habit system. And there's days that I don't feel like training as an athlete. There's days that I don't feel like doing my job in the business world or as an engineer. And that's where discipline comes in and consistency. And I say, you know what, I've, I've got to show up to this. I've made a commitment. I'm, I'm getting paid or people are watching. And so I try to stay committed to those that process after I've I found some things that I can be excited about. But like anything, the excitement always dips, and then you have to be consistent. You have to follow through. You know, for okay. the students out there, you know they they may they've had a hard year learning through the COVID yeah. season back back in the spring, but also in the fall now. Yeah. And it's it's different because you don't have the same motivation. You're not at school with everyone else. So, that, so I think a lot of the students are learning how do you adapt to that. And I, th I think it's worth it to push through, keep finding little motivators. Mm -hmm. And, and then for me, some of the experiences I've had have been overseas. And so that made it, the, the job itself wasn't that fun, but the location was cool and the culture. Yeah. And that's another thing I loved about Exatalon. And that's great. I think you, it's like, you want to always be on that little, the, the edge of a little bit nervous, right? Cause that means you're on the edge of your comfort zone. Yeah, you're growing, that's good. You're pushing. That's good. A little bit, you know, because if you're not yeah. scared, I mean, I don't want to say scared, but if you're not a little bit nervous, if you're mm -hmm. not, if your heart isn't racing a little, that means you're probably doing something that you've already done before. It's too easy, right? You're just going yeah, through the motions. But that's what I love about engineering and, and sports, especially obstacle sports, is yeah. that you're always pushing a little bit further. You're going a little bit uh, harder, right? And, and, and you're yeah. trying to do things that have never been done before, whether that's in a sport or innovation with yeah. engineering. And so that, I think that's what brings that excitement. And I think that's probably what drives your, what you were mentioning earlier, that like kind yeah. of high energy level when you're, when you're on yeah. that edge, right? Exactly. Yeah. You know, that's, that's a good point of, you have to step out of your comfort zone to find it. Yeah. Places when I play it too safe, I get bored 
I don't really align with what I'm doing. I start questioning my purpose. I'm like, God, what is the point of my life? But when I, when I'm stepping out enough where it's a little bit scary, Mm -hmm. that's when it, it starts feeling real. And that's when I also do my best work. And I think we naturally want to be in our comfort zone, whether it's in school or sports, Mm -hmm. but the value is also stepping out outside of that comfort zone where you experience something new. Okay. And then you can have a bigger breakthrough or you can unlock something that you, you always had inside of you that you didn't know about before. And me going on Exatlon as the gringo, maybe that's a good example. <laughs> yeah. I was I was uncomfortable because yo no hablo espanol, yo no entiendo, <laughs> not no tengo, no tengo nada para hablar de espanol. And I'm like, no entiendo the conversation. Like what is <laughs> what is happening around me? But I decided, you know what, these are good people. I'm going to do my best to try to learn. And what's the worst that can happen? You know, I, I go home early and I'm, I'm sad that I didn't do well. I guess it's okay. Mm-hmm. But now I can look at it and say, what a beautiful story. What a great experience. Mm-hmm. I've got Nuevo Familia Siempre, like a new family forever. And in Puerto Rico and Mexico and in Estados Unidos mm-hmm. and Costa Rica and all these places in Latin America that, that I wouldn't have had before. So Exactly. You know, you don't have to choose a, a career path in science or technology or engineering mm-hmm. to learn to step out of your comfort zone. That's just being human and being willing to take a risk. And I, I hope that that's some of the things that we get to continue to push people to do is, you know, it's you, you I think people that are watching have seen some of our successes. You know, you've done a TED mm-hmm. talk. You've been on Exatalon. You've competed as an athlete for a long time. You're you're in the STEM field, but you know, there's a lot of failure that goes along that or a lot of overcoming your own insecurity to, to step out and try that. And as you motivate others, I know you and I have been motivated and encouraged by others to continue to try these things and step out. So I hope that that's what this also is a reminder of. Absolutely. I hope that everyone listening in will take that, that those kind of lessons and kind of self-reflect and say, well, you know, what are those areas where I'm too comfortable in and where can I take a couple steps towards my, you know, the exit of my comfort zone? Um, and, and I, I want to know your thoughts on this. I, I also, you know, you're talking about your struggle there. I had a different struggle. I came into Exatlon with very high expectations of myself. Mm. And I went to elimination the first week that was available for men. So <sighs> I got in there and it was, it was not what I expected. I'm more of a, yeah. a distance athlete. And all of yeah. a sudden, I'm going against these speedy guys, right? Yeah. And so, but I, you know, I kept kind of persevering and ended up making it to week 12 out of 14. So there were certain things that I would tell myself. I, I'm curious as to... Bon trabajo. Bon trabajo. <laughs> yes. I, I'm curious as to what would you tell yourself in those moments? Is there, did you have, moments, you know, when you were having those doubts or the, those insecurities and you're like, man, I don't understand any of these people. My, my, uh, I don't know if I'm going to fit in with my team uh I, you know just other thoughts that may have come through your mind in mm-hmm. those moments early on because you ended up making it to the end and winning the whole thing right so obviously you got over that but i know it wasn't yeah. easy so do you have any any tips or thoughts for people that are getting into these challenging things and, and they start getting those little messages in their mind that says no like this is too hard or you shouldn't do this or you should take the easy route. What, what tips do you have for our students there? Yeah, that's a good, really good question. First, congratulations for all of your success, man, to make it that far, especially if you had to go to elimination first week. I didn't know that. Primero, <laughs> semana, it's, it's more difficult. I got four eliminations. I, got, I finally got eliminated on the fourth one. But wow. My, from my, my perspective, Love I was alone. like, all right, there's more than one path to the finals. <laughs> so, wow, man. I took the you know, hard route. <laughs> exactly. I only had three eliminations the whole okay. season. So I guess I'm in, in the same boat. You and I were both three for three in eliminations. You just had to do the, you had to do the fourth one. I got lucky and didn't go to a fourth one. Yeah. Uh, I think what I've learned, it's important to manage my expectation. Mm-hmm. So I came in with high hopes okay. that I could do well. I thought when I saw the show, I said, I think there's a chance that I could win that. Now, there's so many things that have to happen for that to be possible that if I expect that I win, it's not a good chance it's going to happen. So I came in with the expectation that if I can make a few friends here, if I can 
learn about the Latin American culture a little bit more, if I can learn a little bit of Espanol, and if I can, in my mind, do my best and recognize I'm going to get in hard games and hard situations, and it's okay to fail. It's okay if I get eliminated week one. I don't want to. I would be disappointed, but it's okay because I'm stepping out and I'm trying. So I set the, the expectation low, but I set the hope. I had high hopes, if okay. that makes sense. Yeah. And, and I saw it happen first week. Several people who were actually pretty good got sent to elimination because mm -hmm. sometimes you just get out to a bad start. Yeah. But the key is it's not how you start. It's how you finish. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a typical motivational quote, but there's so much truth in it. And I got out to a pretty good start, so I didn't have to face it the same way you did in your season. But, but you finished well. You, you, got, you got into a bad place, but you didn't let your mind tell you, oh, it's all over. You kept yeah. some confidence because you've gone through struggles in the past, both as an athlete and as a student. Mm -hmm. And in your situations, you've overcome. And so that gave you confidence to not freak out and go, oh, it's, it's over. I'm going to get eliminated. Oh, no. Like you have to fight those negative thoughts and replace them with something else. And so that's what I tried to do just week on week. I didn't look too far down the road. I just said, I'm going to do my best today. I'm going to try to be selfless on my team. So even if, if I need to go and play a game where I think I'm going to lose, mm -hmm. if it helps the team, I'm going to do that anyway. And that ended up helping me out in the long run, not only with building really good relationships with my teammates, but towards the end of the season, I had a lot of experience doing relays and, and going against their best opponents and a few things like that that my other teammates didn't have because I was volunteering for them or accepting the, the nomination early in the season. And so what was what I thought was just being selfless and helping the team ended up helping me more in the end as far as experience goes. So, you know, manage the expectation and whatever you do. Have high hopes, set big goals and dreams, but then – don't beat yourself up if the worst happens and you, you fail. I mean, I've failed on the first obstacle in Ninja Warrior before. Nothing's more embarrassing than that. But <laughs> I, right, I, man. It, was, it was painful. But at the same time, I saw some other successful athletes, men and women, that did the same thing at some point in their, their career. And they told mm -hmm. me, hey, it, it's more important how you respond and mm -hmm. what you learn from here. And so I did that and I came back and, and was successful. Most mm -hmm. things in life – you can be successful at if you come back, if you do yeah. it again. You know, you can't quit. You have to get back up and do it again. Mm -hmm. I, I wear this shirt. It's active faith. You know, many people that follow me know I'm really big on my faith, and I, I feel like God has done a lot in my life to to teach me hard lessons and give me faith. And in the in the science and technical world, we don't talk much as much about the intangibles, the things that we can't measure. Yeah. But – you know, I do live a life of, of faith and perseverance and all of these intangible things go into becoming successful at whatever we pursue, but mm -hmm. you have to keep at it. You have to try it again and again. So yeah. don't, don't give up. Now set your, set your expectations in the right place. If you're not <laughs> eight feet tall, then don't play basketball <laughs> or don't think you're going to be a professional athlete, but uh, find something you enjoy, something that challenges you. Get people around you. You know, you and I, we're, we're peers in the, the STEM world and in the athletic mm -hmm. world. So we motivate each other, whether yeah. or not we see each other a lot. Like I see the things that you talk about and you post and what you're doing. And it excites me. It motivates me. And when I'm feeling down or when I'm feeling like I can't do it or I don't want to anymore, I realize, hey, Jay, he's out there continuing to move forward in his life. And he's going through the same COVID struggles that the rest of us are. He's he doesn't feel like it every day. He didn't win exactly. He didn't accomplish all of his goals, but he's still out there trying again, working hard, being consistent, making connections with other people. Like these are important things in life to do. And you're an example, not only for me, but for others. And, you know, we are seen as leaders, but being a leader is also being a good follower, knowing exactly. someone else is doing it well and not reinventing the wheel. Like, for those of you watching and you're, you're trying to become successful at something, you don't always have to forge a new path. Pick someone that you look up to that motivates you and model your life after them for a little while until you get some of their habits. And then you can 
take those in and then start with someone else. Like, okay, who else do I want to learn from or work from or mm -hmm. grow from? So hopefully those are usable tips. For those of you that do habla en inglés. <laughs> Lo siento you, you, para mi español. Yo no, yo no hablo. <laughs> I don't have enough español ahora for a conversation contigo. But, but I'm like studying said, español cada día, though. <laughs> just like you said, sigue practicando, practicando, practicando. Exactamente. Duolingo is mi amigo. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Give me, yeah, I, I, yo, I, yo necesito uno más año por uh, <laughs> fluent español contigo. Give me one more year. <laughs> Dale. And I think you got to throw yourself, <laughs> continue to throw yourselves in those environments where you have to speak Spanish. Sí, um, that's muy importante. Yeah. But uh, you, some key things there that you mentioned is just like that, that consistency in showing up. You know, you're not going to be super excited every single day, right? And yeah. There's days where you're not going to want to get up and, and, and do that. And that's fine. That's normal for everyone. Um, but the consistency to keep at least moving a little bit forward, you know, taking a small step, if, if it, uh, even if you don't feel like you normally do and you're not taking the same strides that you always do. I'll never forget, and it's at one, one morning we woke up, they, they woke us up. We were in the cabana, so we were in the cabana. Uh, uh, no, the no me gusta cabana. The, <laughs> <laughs> we were either in the mansion or in the cabin. We were in the cabin yeah. that day. Um, and we woke up, and there's this chalkboard outside. And it had our photos of those of us that were left, and it had our percentages. Oh. And uh, mine was one of the lowest, right? Mm. And for a second, I got kind of disappointed about it right but then i also realized you know i'm still here i'm still moving forward i'm not That's gonna good. let that number yeah, so. find me because i'm still pushing forward i'm still growing yeah, yeah. Day, I'm still getting better and so for the other thing that ties to me with a lot of the sports that i've done especially with the long distance obstacle racing is that the thoughts are always going to come in your mind no matter how good i get at it there's always mm -hmm. going to be that one little thing that's going to say you know, just slow down today or, or it hurts sí. too much. It's okay. Sí. That's normal. You just yeah. got to learn to push that back and replace yeah. it with those positive, let's exactly. just keep pushing harder thoughts. And so That's I good, think man. you highlighted that very well in both your, your kind of STEM career and in your sports career. Um, let's, let's go in a little bit on how your STEM career helped you through these processes. So you mentioned in Ninja Warrior, you get one shot. On Exathlon, you tend to have more than one go at a course, but that first time is still very important, right? There's only so many times yeah. you get to pass. So yeah. were you very analytical prior to going on the course? Do you feel that your mechanical engineering, your knowledge of physics, whatever else it may be, have helped you make you a better athlete just because you're better able to analyze a course and understand how things work? Or, or did you just go hard? Like, how... Is there any factor in there? Yeah, great question. Great question. Um, I'm definitely analytical. And my background in training for Ninja Warrior and failing for many years really helped me perform well in Exathlon. Okay. And so, and hey, to everyone, that's every, all the new people that have jumped in, we see some of your comments. Bienvenidos. Glad to have you all here. Um, I'm not going to answer anything more specific about Exathlon right now. I'll do another live on that later. But I see a lot of y'all's comments, and I hope that what Jay and I are talking about are giving y'all some perspective, some value. You know, what I what really helped me this season in Exatalon on the course mm -hmm. was I analyzed when I, I was always watching. I would watch other people compete and run, and I would look and study. Okay, okay. she was really good at that throw. He yeah. was really good at the way that he got through the course. I learned a lot from Tommy Ramos. Anyone know, mm -hmm. anyone on here know Tommy Ramos? I love her. Equipo Famoso, temporada primero. I'm going to stay with Tommy next week. Nice. And Tommy and I really connected because he studied the course. He, he looked, he observed, he watched mm -hmm. people that, that did really well. And by studying, you, you learn little things when you get to the course. And you mm -hmm. see a way to make it a little bit faster and a little bit faster. Okay. And that helped me a lot. So I was usually the fastest or one of the fastest on all the parkours okay. because I wasn't the best athlete. I think many of the contendientes were mejor 
than me. They were better than me mm-hmm. physically. And even on my team, the same. But I would study really well, and that made a difference. And I'm also a hard worker. Like, and I think everyone, especially on the, the blue team, are very hard workers. Mm-hmm. Now, traditionally on the Famosos, you've got a lot of past athletes that are very famous and successful. So they're not always as motivated. Okay. And they may not train or practice or try as hard. Usually they try as hard, but they don't prepare as much as the, the as Kipo Azul. Mm-hmm. So that's a lesson for everyone. You don't have to be the most talented. You don't have to be the most popular. You don't have to be the most successful. If you put in consistent hard work and you study what other people are doing, you can learn a lot and you can avoid a lot of mistakes. Mm-hmm. So I, I tended to do really well because I would, I would focus. I would watch other people compete, throw. I would analyze it, and I would see that one way really worked well and another way it didn't work. And so by the time my run came, I would – use that information. And if I was the first one to go, then I'd do the best I can. And I would make improvement every time. Okay. If I lost, I would try to treat it as a lesson. So for those of you in the more in the uh, career world, try to try to look at a failure more like a learning experience. Yes. And it's, it's very common to hear this, but I, I did it a lot on Exatalon because thankfully you get more than one run. Mm-hmm. And it's usually like, okay, otra vez. You get another run. So I could always make improvements and get better. And so as I got better and didn't get upset when I lost, it was frustrating, especially mm-hmm. on a, a big point. You know, if it was for uh, La Fortaleza or Calvania <laughs> and it was Nuevo, Nuevo, like nine and nine, and I'm going for the relay. And if I lose the point and we go to the Cabana for another Otra Mas Semana, it's like, ah, oh, no way. I can't believe yeah. this is going to happen because it was rough at the Cabana. But I, I learned, you know, it's okay if I lose this. I can remember that it's not the end of the world, that I can learn something from this. And by doing that, the next time it happened, I was more prepared. Okay. And sometimes either my teammates or my opponents – they didn't respond the same way. They either responded in a lot more anger or they got upset or they got disappointed. It, it, it's understandable. Mm-hmm. But the next time it happened, I was more prepared for it because I was like, you know, I can come back from this. It's not the end of the world. I just use mm-hmm. it as a learning experience. And that gave me more in confidence and encouragement. And it, and it paid off because then I could respond to, like in the finals, losing the Nona. She beat me 3-0 the first game 3-0 the next game we're at the third course and it's she beat me 1-0 the first one and then 1-1 then 2-1 2-2 and -hmm. it was almost all over and behind the scenes a lot of things happened that weren't in my favor um, with some course malfunctions and with some Mm -hmm. other delays so I had learned already don't lose don't lose your mind like stay focused on what you need to do and don't let um, little obstacles that pop up, don't let them get in your mind. Yeah. And that's a reminder for everyone. It doesn't matter what you're trying to do. If it's just be consistent in your schoolwork, if you're making progress as an athlete, when you go to game day, when you go to take the test, when you do the job application, when you give the presentation, mm-hmm. when you do an Instagram live, something can always go wrong. You, you have to expect it. And when it happens, don't freak out. You learn to roll with it. Okay, this is life. Something's going to happen. So what are we talking about? The first thing I talked about is problem solvers. You you see a problem that pops up? Okay, how do I fix it? Instead of, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, this happened. It's a bad sign. It's the end of the world. It's all over. No, mucho take it easy. Mucho take it easy. It's, It's okay. Con calma. Just con calma, exactamente. <laughs> Just take a moment and go, okay, this happened, but you know what? I've had things like that happen before, mm-hmm. and I'm still okay. So d- don't freak out. Just roll with it. Keep moving mm-hmm. forward. Keep taking a step. And and I even did that in the finals, and I was this close to losing the whole thing. And it was a long journey. 23 semanas. 24 semanas. Mm-hmm. And tres major lesiones, injuries, three major injuries. And it was like, I came all this way and now 
one little thing is about to end it all. And I went back to the expectation piece. You know what? I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful that I'm even here, that I even get this opportunity. And if it all ends right now, that's okay. And Nona is an incredible person. I love Nona. She's amazing. I was like, if she wins this, then that's fine. I'm mm -hmm. happy for her. I just want to give my best and not lose because I, I didn't stay focused. So I, I kept my mind in the right place. I mean, and as I mentioned, you know, I'm a man of faith. So I was spending a lot of time in prayer, a lot of time in meditation and trusting that this is part of the process. And this is, you know, some, an opportunity for me to learn and, and see God move in a really cool way. And it, and it worked out. Now, if it didn't work out in a win, that's okay too. You know, life, life isn't always about winning. I heard a quote from an actor, Matthew McConaughey. He was talking about being in Africa and he, he took on a, a strange challenge and he did well. He, he ended up doing this crazy wrestling match against the African tribal guy. Okay. And he, he and he did well with it and he didn't speak the language. <laughs> And he asked his friend, he's like, did I, did I win? Did I lose? What happened? And the guy said, it doesn't matter. It's not about winning or losing. It's about, did you accept the challenge? Mm -hmm. And that spoke to me because I've lost, I've lost in many things. But if I look back at it and realize, no, actually, I just accepted the challenge. And that was the important part. And if I hadn't accepted and failed at many challenges in my past, I would have never gotten the opportunities for Exatalon. Mm -hmm. And if I hadn't overcome many injuries in the past, I wouldn't have gotten through the injuries I had on Exatalon. And if I hadn't trusted God in many situations in my life in the past, I wouldn't have been able to do that in the finals in Exatalon. So mm -hmm. I can look back at all these situations where it wasn't about winning or losing. It wasn't about making the A. It wasn't about getting the best job or doing well on the application or performing perfectly. It was about me stepping up and taking the challenge, accepting it, getting out of my comfort zone. And then incredible things have happened that I never expected. And, and I could say that about my engineering career. Like I, I never knew what I was getting into, and I wanted to quit so many times as I was working my way through school. And I had to work other jobs, and I, I was like, it's not worth it. This is so hard. I'm not that good. I, I was not that talented in engineering. I had to do a lot of hard work and my peers were all better than me, but I can make up for that in, in hustle and about teamwork. Yes. And so if you're the student that's really good, help, help someone that's struggling a bit, but then mm -hmm. realize maybe they can help you in something else. I was, I think I was a better communicator in the engineering world than many of my peers. And so mm -hmm. that was a strength that I started realizing and began developing. Yeah. And now it is a strength of mine. And those who had the better technical skill, they helped me in the technical realm, and I helped them in the communication realm. And so look at your strengths, leverage them, use them to help others, and then don't be too proud to allow other people to help you. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes a good team. That's what makes a good foundation. And then, and that's what made Exatline great because it was a team sport, and we yeah. loved it. I had, I love my my team. I love everyone on there. We had so much fun. We went through so many challenges. I'll, for those of you that you know, are asking other Exathlon questions, I will share a lot of those cool stories that we experienced you know, as, in different conversations. I haven't done much yet, but um, for the point of this, this conversation, you know, more in the science and technology blending with sports, like that mindset of perseverance and mm -hmm. analyzing something and learning from others and learning that, hey, I have opportunities here, so let's let's practice, let's perfect it. Let's not look at it as a failure. Let's look at it as a learning opportunity. Yeah. That helped me in my engineering career. Being a good teammate helped me in the engineering world, in the business world, and eventually our whole team was successful. And as a team in Equipo Rojo, we made a lot of money at the money wall. Yeah. And <laughs> several times we won $50,000 and it was amazing. And we did that as a team, like with the victory and then also deciding on what numbers we're going to do. Mm -hmm. So communication is a, a big piece and no matter what you do. A hundred percent. So I think you're, you're spot on there. I mean, many things, again, the hearts just keep coming. So keep showing the love for me. <laughs> Thank y'all. We're going to have to do a separate uh, call on Exatron experience. Maybe we'll do another one a different day and just talk about, 
our experiences on the different seasons. Yeah. Um, but you, you mentioned a lot of cool things. And I think one of the keys there is just understanding your strengths on the team mm. and understanding how you surround yourself with people to help you in the areas that you're not the best at. Right. So I kind of call it like a, a personal board of directors. You should have people yeah, that's around good. you. They're going to help you with, with your blind spots. The areas that are a little bit more difficult for you. And then you need to be on someone else's personal board of directors as the, the expert in the areas that you're strongest in. And whether that be in sports See? or, or um, STEM, that's what's going to lift your team. And, and for all of this, the first students here listening in, I know that you want to win, right? But yeah. there's so many valuable skills that you gain from the experience of being on a robotics team and working on, mm. on teams and working in alliances with other teams that no matter what your experience that day on, on the competition field is, there's so many good things that are co going to come from it afterwards. And again, it's just keep moving forward towards that in the future. Um, for me, it was I, all the rejections I got from Ninja Warrior. I've applied a bunch of times mm. and didn't get a call back, but that experience of creating the application video and starting mm -hmm. to understand a little bit about what they were looking for is what helps my application video for Exatlon stand out. So if I, if I would have just said, man, exactly, you know, there's no more, you know, this is not for me. Uh, this was a waste of time, et cetera. And not have kept pushing forward with things. I wouldn't have gotten wow. the loan experience. And now maybe wow. it will help me get Ninja Warrior. Who knows? Exactly. Right? Very possible. Yeah. Exactly. So like, how do you That's good. To leverage those strengths and, and learn from the areas that you weren't That's good at, or you may have gotten some rejection in but to keep moving forward towards the things that you're most passionate let, about. Let me ask you a question. How many seasons did you apply to Ninja Warrior? Oh, man. So I, let's start from the beginning. I don't remember the exact number, but I remember the first time I ever tried to do anything was my brother, um, he was living in South Florida at the time. I was in Tampa. And he's like, dude, Ninja Warrior's like downtown Miami. Like I heard you can just show up and like try it. Uh -huh. So I'm like, Come on. dude, I'm driving down like right now, and obviously no I way. Got really late. So okay, so you tried to walk on, of, just like walking yeah, on? Walk on. Okay, this right was on. back in the day where you could walk on like kind of overnight type of thing, right? Yeah, you could show up and there's a chance. What year was this? Um, Do you remember? What was that? Do you remember what year that was? I think it was season five. I don't remember. The okay, year. yeah, that probably sounds right. I walked on in season six and seven. Okay, so that so, was back when it before it got crazy. Yeah. yeah, we got there, um, you know, so there's a bunch of people ahead of us. We stayed, they let a group in, we got closer and, you know, we stayed until like two in the morning and said, sorry guys, we can't put anyone else on the course. The next year I'm like, oh, okay. So now we just know we have to camp out one night right. and we'll get it, right? And so camped out and this year I find out there's so many more people that know yep. about this walk on process, right? And so like, I get there, I'm number like 50. Again, spent the whole night there, slept in the park um didn't make it then i started mm -hmm. applying right the mm -hmm. first time i applied i waited to the last second i made a video in uh my my girlfriend's dorm and it was terrible it's no bueno yeah yeah, was, yeah. yeah mi primero is no bueno <laughs> yeah. and then i had another one where i think it was better but i focused just on the athletics and i didn't realize yep. the importance of focusing on the story and then I did a good story, but it was uh, another year. I think it was a good story, but it was a sad story, and I didn't show my energy. Mm -hmm. and, and just like each time, yeah. I just learned a little bit better. I don't know. It's been at least, if you include the walk-ons and the lotteries that I've attempted, Come on. seven or eight rejections maybe. Wow, bro. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's, that's even higher of a number than I was looking for. I was okay. hoping you, you at least gave it three or four shots. <laughs> so I want to make a point of that because yeah. I've gone through some of the same things. I did walk on twice. Mm -hmm. I applied three times before I got on. Okay. Now I had a, a, a few unique things happen that made me stand out a little bit more, mm -hmm. but the, the key is you learn something from each time. Yes. Because you learn, all right, it wasn't all about just showing up. You have to make an application. You made mm -hmm. an application and it wasn't just about athletics even though it's an athletic competition. And for those of y'all that are interested in Exathlon, it's the same way. It's yes. not just your athletic ability. It's also your communication and your mindset. And you have to learn what are they looking for and do I have that ability to show it? And so, as Jay, as you learned, okay, 
They don't want just want to see your athletic ability. They want to see your personality, and they want to know about a story. But can you bring energy and entertainment? And you learn something every year, and you still didn't get accepted. So I commend you that not only did you keep trying, and I hope everyone recognizes this. Look, look at the perseverance. Now, then you got on Exatlon, and I guarantee you, you wouldn't have got on Exatlon had you not had those prior attempts at Ninja Warrior and learned to elevate yourself, and you learned, okay, athletics, but then presentation, energy, excitement, purpose, all of these things go together, and you stood out to them enough for them to choose you, and Exatlon is more selective than Ninja Warrior. So you went to the hardest thing, and that was the first one that you got on and then became successful at. And so that's a reminder for everyone watching. Hey, if you persevere, if you keep going, if you keep trying, if you and you have to learn. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't, if you get rejected, don't take it as a personal insult because it was hard for me when I got rejected from Ninja Warrior the first year, and then the second year, <laughs> and I walked on and I failed, and I walked on and I failed. I got on in the walk on lines both times, okay. and I still failed. So it was like, oh, I got my <laughs> shot. And it's, it's worse for you when you don't know what you would have done. But then mm -hmm. it feels pretty painful when you don't do well. You're like, oh, <laughs> maybe it would have been better if I hadn't gotten on. But I'm, I commend you for continuing to persevere. And, and you, you wrote your own story in the way that you didn't let it define you. Because mm -hmm. if you had stopped after the fourth or fifth try, or if you never applied to Exatalon, then you wouldn't have a – a story that shows it was worth it. But now you've gotten on not only an incredible program, but you did it because you hit, you were well-rounded. Mm -hmm. I, I love considering myself well-rounded. A well-rounded warrior is what I say. You know, it's a strong mind. It's a strong body. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> it's strong in your spirit. It takes all three. Mm -hmm. And for you to get on Exatlon, you showcased one skill that I don't have yet, but it's being bilingual. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. I'm hearing a police officer talking in a car behind me, but I don't think he's talking oh, to me. I see, I see the lights back there. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all see these lights back here? <laughs> I'm in my brother's vehicle. He might be talking to me. If it is, I may have to go. But, um, yeah, I think we're all right. Anyway, so, but for, for you, <laughs> there's a little side. There's some drama. <laughs> we'll problem solve. I'll have yeah. to learn my communication skills with the police officer. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think what you did was showcase those skills and you kept learning and trying and improving. It's not just trying the same thing again. That's kind of insanity. You mm -hmm. improved. You made it a little bit of a change. Yes. And that gave you a better opportunity. It's going to lead to more things. And you've inspired me from that because I don't know if I would have kept trying after six or seven attempts. You know, mm -hmm. I broke through on my third attempt as far as getting on the show. Yeah. And – so that's encouraging for me to hear. Yeah, I hope people listening, whether you're applying for Exatlon or for Ninja Warrior or for a, a graduate school or just applying to, you know, the schools that you want to go to for to study um, whatever it is you want to study, whether it's engineering mm -hmm. or something else, that, you know, that you'll see that, whether it was the three or the eight, that, you know, if you're in your first or yeah. second, just keep pushing because you're going to grow, you're going to learn, you're going to get better and closer to accomplishing exactly. those goals and um you know that's that key is that perseverance there and taking something from it with you that's what's going to help you get better and move forward and and also finding the joy in 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 it so that it doesn't matter if you get on the show or it doesn't mm -hmm. matter if you get into that specific university but that you still have that passion and you're still going to be able to reach your goals um regardless yep Hey, are you good? Or are you guys police I'm, coming? To I'm getting a question here. Hold on. Yeah. We might be ending this. Okay. Hey there, yes, sir. Going? Good. How are you doing? Good. Park's closed. I got to lock the parking lot right oh, now. Okay. Can I can I wrap up in about two minutes? No, that's like right now. Okay, I gotta go, guys. No worries, brother. The Thank uh, you for coming the, on. the park is closing that I'm in. I was doing a workout before this, okay. finding a way to continue to make a step every day. So I flew into San Diego today, didn't have a chance to exercise, and I made something happen in the park. Just a, just a little bit, but now the park's closing. But made the most of that. Uh, so We appreciate your time, man. The tips were amazing. It's great to be able to talk to someone that's both 
uh, very successful in the STEM world and in the sports world. So I think the students are going to take a ton from this. And yeah. um, when it, championship is usually in Houston. So when it gets back to in person, oh. we'll go down there together. Come on. I'd love to have it. I'll host you. All right, man. Come I'll on. talk to you soon. Thank you. Right on. Thank you. Hey, everyone that tuned in, muchas gracias por su apoyo. Thank you gracias for being a host. part of this. Y'all can hit us up later with some questions on any follow-up posts that we have. Thank you for the engagement. And I'm looking forward to sharing a lot of cool stories about Exatalon. I think we got in a taste of it today, but there's plenty more to come. Yeah, All right. Definitely follow up on that one. Exactamente. Right, thank you, everyone. Later, bro. Thank you.